Hey, you mentioned something interesting offhand there, which was you said uh, out of humility, like I don't know everything about growing a small business, so I want to get an expert. Yeah. Which I think is like the split that I see sometimes in content, which is like um, specialist produced content, subject matter expert led content. Mm-hmm. Which, depending on the yeah. space, is very hard to get like actual like subject yeah. matter experts to write a full two thousand word article. And then yeah. doing your you know your own kind of bespoke research and and you know yeah. it's hard to bridge that gap sometimes. But you have a journalism yeah. background, so it sounds like. You, you you naturally thought, hey, I should reach out to experts who have been doing this for 20 years. Do, do you credit your journalism yeah, for sure. background for that viewpoint? <laughs> you know, I hadn't thought about it until you put it that way, but I guess that that is very much a mindset that I've always been in, which is like, I see it more as my job to curate information than to actually know everything. And, and using expert sources is a big part of that, referring people to other resources. So yeah, that to me, it just it, it just naturally made sense. It was like, I, I know a lot about marketing. I could talk about marketing all day, but running a small business, you know, hiring, like, you know, there's, there's a lot to, to running a small business that's outside the realm of marketing. And I don't want to overstep my bounds. I would much rather, you know, it would take me hours to do research and write something with any level of authority that someone else probably knows like the back of their hand. So to me, it was just like, let's, let's get folks who know their stuff, who want to share and, you know, give them, give them a chance to, to fill in on that platform, you know? How do you distinguish between people who know what they're talking about and who don't, and also the ones that can actually <laughs> write a full article and the ones who can't? You know, that is a really good question. Contributors. Um, you know, a lot of them are folks that ask. We're always Mm. like if reach out to me if you you've got an area of expertise, you know, generally speaking, I like to to look on who has some experience with writing. Um, so if they have a blog or you know, they have a newsletter or there's something that indicates like this person, you know, is is skilled in this area and can can contribute something that's gonna be valuable for the audience. Um, and also, you know, I I don't want to do a ton of editing, which is not to say that I I don't want to do the work, but more so that I don't want to, I don't want to have to like squash someone's voice or like Mm. change their intent. I would really like for them to to kind of have that so that I don't have to influence that. You know, I want their voice to come through. I don't want it to be me rewriting it. You know, you don't have like some Um, like top down editorial style guide where everybody's supposed to fit this homogenous voice. It's more so like a God, I don't know, like a Atlantic or something like that, where like you can yeah. read an author uh, like Derek Thompson, and he's got like his own unique viewpoints and voice. Obviously, it fits 100%. under the same format of the Atlantic, but you're not stifling yeah. that to fit some like brand kind of image um, across the board. No, I mean, there's a couple of things we do for consistency just because it makes for a better user experience. Like I, we style a lot of them the same. So, you know, we have consistent fonts that we use, you know, we're, we're doing the publishing of it. So that's the formatting and like the layouts. Um, you know, I, we try to use a certain type of imagery that fits our brand. You know, we, we pull images from our library. We don't ask folks to come up with imagery, although if they have like graph graphics and, and graphs, charts, things like that, we're happy to include it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, we have a set of like broad guidelines that of what's brand safe. I'm not asking people to write as if they are the convoy because their value is actually that they're from outside, like their, Mm -hmm. their experience, their personal stories, like their background. That's, that's why, you know, that's why they're, they're here. Um, So, but yeah, we have some like brand guidelines, just like as a rule, like we don't cuss, for example. So like, you know, if I ask folks like, don't do that. And if you do that, we're going to have to remove that. That's not on brand for us. Um, We also, as a general rule, try not to make negative, examples of people, particularly small businesses, Mm. it is so much more powerful to talk about what to do right than to sort of like tear somebody down or call someone out and say like, this is the wrong way to do things. Um, We're really trying to have like a positive educational, um, you know, tone to what it is that we're doing. Like we're here to help. Um, And so, you know, we're not, we're not, not trying to bring in like, you know, trash talk or your like case studies of what not to do. Um, so yeah, there's, there's like a couple broad guidelines, but for the most part, I mean, if somebody has an idea and I think that idea is, you know, would be valuable for small business owners and then we'll find a way to fit it in. No, I like that. Those are, those are more broad heuristics, not necessarily like writing style tips. Cause like I, yeah. I do like, I, I see people on Twitter talking about like their writers first and foremost, they talk yeah. about like content marketing mistakes and it's like, well, here's the difference between an M dash and an N dash and a hyphen. And here's AP <laughs> style versus Chicago style and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And I just think like if, if somebody asked me to come in and write an article about SEO or experimentation and gave me a guide that was like five or six pages, tips like that, 
<laughs> like there's yeah. zero chance I'm going to read through that. But if I could have three or four well, items where it's like, here's what we adhere to, like philosophically, not necessarily yeah. like my writing style, then, oh, I can, yep. I can not swear in an article, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's, that's exactly what it is. I have it to one page. That's my, I, I wanted it to be a one pager. It's not like densely packed. Um, and it's an outline that includes both like, here's our process. So like, here's what to expect. Here's how to submit your article. And here are some, like, like you said, broad philosophical things to keep in mind, like be positive, be educational. Like we're here to help. Um, don't swear, please. Um, <laughs> you know, just a, just a couple broad things, but yeah, I mean, it's, um, it, in a way I'm recognizing that you know, because, because we are really mission oriented, this is not, this is not the Atlantic. We're not paying contributors, you know, like it's not, it's, we're not able to do that given the stage of our business right now. Um, and so I want to make it easy. I'm, I'm not trying to give you homework. I, I just would really like to offer the opportunity to share if, if you'd like to share, um, you know, to, to give that as an option. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's important too. You know, we're, we're lucky that we're at the stage of business where we're flexible on those things. I, I can understand, you know, some larger enterprises, they may have, you know, different types of concerns, uh, legal concerns, you know, compliance type things they have to worry about, but luckily we, we can be flexible. So, so I'm trying to hold on to that while we can. <laughs>